Thank you, Brian. Late breaking news now from overnight. Reports of gunfire and evidence of some sort of struggle causes Southern Illinois University's DPS to evacuate the campus. Giacomo Luca has more. Southern Illinois University police came here to Lawson Hall late Friday night. They evacuated the building and secured the area after hearing reports of a possible gunman on campus. We don't have any evidence yet that gunshots were actually fired. We do have evidence of an altercation. Just after 9 o'clock Friday night, university police alerted campus to steer clear of Lawson Hall. While university officials are now saying there's no evidence of shots fired. So right now it's going to be a matter of uh, police investigation so we can understand what really happened. For students that were on campus when alerts went out, it caused quite a stir. Well, it's really scary, and I know that the school has been um, trying to amp up their efforts as far as improving school safety. Something she said will make her think twice for the future. You can't predict when something like this is going to happen, so it just makes you a lot more cautious. University officials say this is the nature of a college campus, and every report will be taken seriously. We continue to believe that we have a, re a safe campus here um, at SIU. Before leaving the scene, police did say that the campus is currently safe and secure. Now that investigation will continue. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Live local late breaking from SIU campus, Giacomo Luca, Heartland News. As always, we'll continue to update this story as it develops. Make sure you check out our website, kfes12.com, for more information. You can also like and share our story on our Facebook page. Two people now face murder charges in connection to a shooting death in Poplar Bluff. Police say they arrested 24 year old Patricia Bales in connection to the shooting death of an early of a man early yesterday morning. Police say Bales lives in the same area where the shooting happened. Also charged with murder, 21 year old Walter Curry Jr. Police arrested him shortly after announcing he was wanted in connection to a shooting. The shooting happened just before six yesterday morning on the 500 block of Cynthia Street. The victim had been shot several times. He was taken to the hospital but later died. Also happening overnight, a crash involving a school bus going southbound on I-57 in Williamson County. A viewer sent us the picture of that bus. Illinois State Police, Police would not tell us much information, but one local official with the Sheriff's Department says they believe no one was on the bus except the driver. No injuries have been reported at this time. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated as the show continues. A second person has been arrested in connection to a deadly shooting at the University of Kentucky. Lexington police say 20 year old Efron Diaz has been charged with murder and robbery. He and 18 year old Justin Smith faced charges in the death of 22 year old Jonathan Kruger. Kruger was shot early yesterday morning near the campus while walking home from a party. An update now to the violent shooting in Phoenix, Arizona. Police described the shooting that left five people dead as a murder suicide. Authorities say the gunman got into a business dispute with his two brothers before he shot and killed them, as well as one of their wives and his mother before taking his own life. The gunman's wife and two young children managed to escape the home. A lawsuit is filed against a Heartland meat processing plant. Missouri Attorney General Chris Coster accuses Fruitland American Meats in Jackson of polluting a stream with waste from its slaughterhouse. The lawsuit claims the waste led to discoloration of the water and a foul stench. Coster blames the alleged pollution for killing at least 900 fish. For most of us, the latest round of local elections was all said and done more than a week ago, but not in Pinckneyville. The more mayoral candidates right now are separated by only five votes and 27 still have not been counted. Loretto Cruz has the details. While mayor elects across the heartland are preparing for their first term, candidates in Pinckneyville are still waiting for the results of the race. We have um, five ballots that are separating the mayor's race from Pinckneyville between Robert Spencer and Fran Thomas. It was just a very hard vote for a lot of people. Everybody is on the edge of their seats. Whether it's picking out council members for their new administration or working out a recovery plan for what both candidates call a dated infrastructure in need of attention. This election hasn't been decided yet, so all those things are out there hanging that have to be done and the time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Uh, I like to be ready to to get started, I know the people in this, this town will be um, looking forward to the end of the race and, and, and to get started moving forward. Think your vote doesn't count? 
Well, what about the five votes that separate these two potential mayors? In fact, officials say at this point, only one vote could end up tipping the scale. After the election, only five votes separated the two candidates. Right now, officials have received six absentees. This is something new. I mean, this is something new to this town. We just don't have a, a race every day that <laughs> five votes. Even though it will be a close call, many residents say they still feel good about the outcome. It's going to be a historic you know, election either way because the first woman or you know, first African-American. And either way, it's just, it's awesome. <laughs> I think they'll be happy either way. Why is that? Because they're just two fine individuals. Very, you know, very good qualified individuals. The missing votes are either still in the mail or are sealed up in town. They'll be counted on Tuesday, but with the race as close as it is, both candidates have expressed interest in a recount. I'm sure they're going to see a lot of businesses that they know and street corners that they know and um, and friends and family that are in this film. So we encourage everybody to come out. Well, if you missed it last night, don't worry. You'll have another chance to see Cape Girardeau on the big screen. The film called Love Chronicles of the Cape premiered last night on CMO's campus. It was field filmed here in town and features many local actors. If you'd like to check it out, it will be showing again tonight at the Rose Theater on campus. It all starts at 630.